Hello, I'm Ashley Mills. I'm in Team 8 in Cohort 17. Today is January 23rd, 2012, and we're using the December 2011 UDK beta. This is Part 1, Importing and Basic Materials. Before you begin using the Material Editor, the first step is to import your artwork. Um, first, make sure you have the Content Browser open, and if you don't, it's this icon up here. Now go down to Import, and find your texture files. And when you're saving these files, make sure they're targas, and make sure their sizes are in power of 2. So the ones we're using are 1024 pixels square. Now we're going to use a diffuse normal map and specular map, and hit open. Now we have to name our package, so we'll name this one Wood Planks, and the grouping is Textures. Now for the Diffuse, you want to have Blending on Blend Opaque, and you want to have Compression No Alpha checked, because we're not using an alpha channel. Alpha channels are used to make your texture have translucent or transparent areas and compression settings are going to be TC default. Now for the normal map, you change the compression to TC normal map. And for the spec, change it back to default. Now we have our package, and we have our three textures in here. So the next thing we have to do is make a new material. So make sure your material is going in the same package. Call the grouping materials, and we're going to name it Wood Planks Mat 01, and change the factory to material. Now what that does is it opens the material editor. The basic parts of the material editor are the preview pane, which is over here on the left, and that lets you view your materials on one of these four basic geometries. You can have it on a cylinder, a cube, a sphere, or a plane. Then this middle area is your work area, and that's called the expression graph. Then this menu on the right is your list of expressions that you can drag into here and change your material, which we'll get to. And the bottom is Properties, and that brings up a menu for what expression you have selected. So let's add our textures in here. And a quick way to get your textures in the Material Editor is just to drag and drop them in. And the way you move these in here is you have to select them and then press control and then you can drag them around. Let's get them into place. Now the colored boxes on the side of these textures um, represent channels. So you have your red channel, your green channel, your blue channel, and then the black is RGB, so that's all of those combined. And the white is your alpha channel. So for this, we're going to use the RGB channels. So all you do is you click and drag to link your diffuse to this diffuse channel for your material. And put your spec in your specular channel and normal in the normal channel. And that's a basic texture and you can see it on the cube over here. So that's how you use your textures in the material editor, but we also have these expressions over here. So let's look at some commonly used expressions. First we'll need a multiply, which is similar to what a multiply layer does in Photoshop. Blends things together and we'll use a constant. And we're going to use these 
to edit our spec map. So as you can see, this wood is not very shiny right now. Usually wood is more of a matte texture, but if we want to make it more shiny, we can edit it with these expressions. So first, break the link for your spec, move this over to the right. We'll need to move our multiply closer to the front. And then you just link your spec into the multiply. And then we're going to take this constant and link it into the other port on the multiply. Then you just take multiply and put it in the specular channel. So it hasn't done anything yet. What we have to do is click on this constant. And as you can see, it brought up a menu down here in the properties. So we really just have this one number to play with for the regular constant. So let's look at what it does. That added some shininess, but we need to see some more. And that added a little more and more, the higher you go. I think we'll go with 10. That looks pretty good. Move this normal map out of the way. Now another thing you can do with your specular map is we can add another constant. And this time we're going to put the constant in the specular power channel. And as you can see that just made the reflection much much bigger and it's very shiny now. So we'll need to play around with this here. And actually, when you plug it into specular power, the smaller the number is, the bigger the reflection is. And then the bigger the number is, the smaller the reflection is. So let's make this... Um, let's, I like 10. We'll also make this 10. Now this has a nice level of shininess to it. Almost like when wood is wet. Now let's do another expression. So normally you make changes to the diffuse map in Photoshop, but you can also do this with expressions. Um, one useful expression to change your diffuse is power. So let's take a power, drag it in here, and break the link on your diffuse and power will need to go on this side and we plug that into diffuse you have to plug your diffuse into the base port on power and now we need something to go in this exp port down here so we're going to take another constant except this time we're going to take a constant three vector and what that lets you do is lets you edit um, RGB separately. So you can edit each channel separately from each other. So if we raise the number on here, so you see what power does is it increases the contrast of your diffuse and it also makes it a little darker. And that also goes with what we just did to the spec, making it look like it's wet wood. So another thing you can do, these don't all have to be the same number, I'll put, them, put in two for each right now, but you can also make one a little different. And we just gave this a little bit of a blue tint. So I'm happy with this material now. Let's apply the changes with this green arrow up in the corner. Close that, and now we have it in our package. So let's save this package, and make sure when you're saving these that they're going into the content folder in UDK so that you can get to them every time you open UDK. Hit save. Okay, and let's look at this in the game. Um, we'll import just, I have this square plane mesh here. And we'll put it in static mesh. 
double click on your mesh and give it a simple collision and now click on the material we just made and make sure it's highlighted and then under LOD info on the static mesh go down to material and click the green arrow next to it and that puts your material on the mesh okay let's look at this in the game And there it is. Alright, thank you for watching.